Today's episode is brought to you by Domain.com. Alright, camera's rolling. Got it. Alright, Darren. Alright, watch TV, eat some chips. Action. Give me a little bit more flicker, Sam. Alright, Darren, settle into it a little more. You look like you've been sitting there for only about 30 seconds. There you go. All right, Darren, bring that, that look of nothingness you had last night. Almost like you're not even paying attention to what's on the TV. You're just looking beyond it. All right, cut. Welcome to Behind the Scenes of Real Gone Part 2. I'm Seth Worley, the writer and director of Real Gone, and today we're going to dive into Day 2. <laughs> Especially day one, and we are uh, we're gonna start by filming. We've actually we've rented a uh, motel, two motel rooms. We actually got two next to each other, so one's our production room and one is our set. Uh, Chris is over there right now, getting the lighting set up for our first shot, and uh, I'm in here just assembling the audio gear. It's one of those shorts where it doesn't have very much audio. Uh, it doesn't have any really barely any dialogue in it, um, and so we're kind of just getting ambient sound and some on on-site sound effects. But uh, uh, it's important that that actually sound good. So, you know, we have this beautiful road mic that Ryan and Road got me. Today was our first day of recording audio, which of course we were using our Tascam recorder and our Rode mic. And continuing shooting with the Red Epic that Eric Kessler loaned us. We were shooting with Canon Cinema Primes that we got from Lens Pro to go. We were scheduled to shoot in the dining room first. Of course, this is a one room hotel, so there was no dining room, it was all the same room. But this was the stuff pointing toward the kitchen. This shot involved simulating TV light by putting one of these cool LED things on the front of the uh, TV. First couple shots were dolly shots, which we used the Kessler shuttle pod for. This thing is super awesome and versatile. I'm a big fan of the Kessler Cinedrive and the shuttle pod. They both are fantastic replacements for standard dolly. Our second shot was the shot coming down over Darren's shoulder, down to the envelope to see the goodbye. We accomplished this super fast because we were shooting with the shuttle pod, so we were able to very easily transition between shots. Once we were done shooting the dining room, we moved into the bedroom to film Darren lying in bed looking super depressed. We simulated that harsh morning sunlight with an HMI set outside the window. I wanted an overhead shot looking straight down at Darren, and we accomplished that by basically standing on the bed with a DSLR, finding the right framing, and then Chris set up a tripod on top of the bed shooting directly down at Darren. So basically Darren was lying in bed with half a crew uh, standing or laying on top of him, which is how he prefers to sleep anyway. He's weird. He's a weird guy. So we moved on to the bathroom shots. Chris stimulated that harsh, disgusting fluorescent light with a kino we hung from the ceiling. These shots just looked so much like they're straight out of a David Fincher film. One interesting shot was the shot of Darren standing in the shower. I told Chris, I, for some reason, I really wanted a lot of headroom at the top. It just made him feel smaller and more insignificant being down in the bottom right of the corner. The shot of Darren getting up and actually pulling the extension cord out of from behind the bed originally went a lot longer, um, and it was really, really funny. None of us felt like it needed to be cut, but then when we cut it, we felt like, oh yeah, I don't miss it, and the pacing's a lot better. At least, it's always worth a try, cutting stuff. Cut your whole movie, at a certain point. If you're an entrepreneur, innovator, or inventor of any kind, Domain.com is a place to go for your next great idea. Domain.com has a domain extension list of 200 plus and growing to help further your brand. Extensions like .ninja, .expert, or .nyc. And we could save you 20% off your domain name, web hosting, and email by using the coupon code FILMRIGHT at checkout. So when you think domain names, think Domain.com. We just got done with the apartment scene here at the hotel. And uh, my schedule actually had us going over schedule because I didn't get it. I never got a chance to actually tighten it before today, but we actually are getting out at a very, very good time. We just are trying now to rush, pack up, and get over to the uh, 
a beach. There's a beach in Nashville. We're gonna see how beachy it looks. Um, there's no ocean in Nashville, but there's a beach. We're gonna go over to it and film at it, and hopefully be filming as the sun goes down, getting all of our shots out. It was Chris's idea in pre-production to get a tilt shift lens from Lens Pro to Go to use during the heaven sequences. So we're using tilt shift lenses out here, which um, basically give you the ability to move the focal point of the lens, uh, and it allows you to get like different planes in focus and some really abstract and cool stuff. This is so weird. Chris shot it all handheld, and uh, so of course we use the Easy Rig from Lens Pro to Go, so Chris can carry that red epic without dying. We also shot all of it at a slightly higher frame rate to get a kind of a dreamier, smoother motion to all the shots. The majority of the lens flares in that scene are actually captured there in the shot because we were shooting directly into the sun. I ended up adding a few in post, but I didn't want to use the standard anamorphic blockbuster cinema lens flare. So I used a plugin called Overlight, which is part of Red Giant Universe. These awesome built-in kind of light leak looking filters. I ended up using that throughout the heaven sequences just to give it a little bit of extra lens flare. Right before getting our first shot, I remember I decided it would be a good idea for some reason to kick dirt into Darren's face. Oh, he's laying this way? How do you want him? Do you want his face out there? I thought he was laying more profile, but this is kind of cool. I think so. You two gotta work some stuff out <laughs> before you ask me. Darren, to get down, down on the ground. Put your face in the sand. I want you to already have some sand on you. Forgive me, Darren. <laughs> Love you, bud. What are you doing? <laughs> Everyone thought it was really mean and terrible, but I mean, it looks really good in the frame, you know? Pain is temporary, film is forever. Darren is for kicking dirt on. Zemeckis said that. Cut. That's it. That was exactly everything I ever wanted. After the beach scene, we actually had a third location, which I did not think we would get done, and we actually got it done. Unfortunately, it was for a scene that we eventually deleted from the film uh, for pacing reasons. found that in post that pacing was a lot better to cut straight from knocking the toaster in the bathtub through the hanging sequence. For the scene, Anne found an amazing location called Able Restaurant Equipment Company. I love this place. It's awesome. The guy who runs it was super nice. We actually wrapped on time, getting everything we had planned to get done, and which is ridiculous when you think about all the stuff we had planned to get done in that day. I told Ryan the behind the scenes for this film is going to be so boring compared to yours because everything went wrong on Ryan's film and everything was going right on my film. Did that luck continue on day three? Find out next week that the answer is yes.